Um, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I, I'm not super familiar with peer to peer lending markets as an, I haven't been an active user. Um, I'm aware of it. I've done research on it. I know how big it is. And uh, even in other countries, like in China, it got really big and got kind of ahead of itself. Um, yeah. But when you have companies that are kind of centrally controlling that, are you really doing peer to peer, like person to person and someone's in the middle uh, managing that? Or is it really kind of not so much, it's more like portfolio lending or something? Uh, I think it depends a little bit on the implementation uh, from the platform. So, uh, for example, like on Lending Club, which is the largest peer-to-peer -peer lending platform in, in the U.S., um, currently only about 10% of the loans that Lending Club makes are financed peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning there's a retail individual on the other end who's providing the capital that goes towards uh, making that loan. And it's completely centralized in the sense that Lending Club is always making the loan from a regulatory perspective. Uh, Lending Club is controlling the decision about who gets approved for a loan and at what price. Um, and then there's other types of you know peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending implementations um, that are different variations on that on that same on that same theme. Yeah, I was just curious how this model kind of fits because obviously with BlackFi, I could loan or borrow. Uh, but it's not peer to peer, right? So I'm kind of going in with the company and then the company's kind of acting. So I guess it's similar to what the P2P industry is doing. Uh, but the good piece of it, which is, you know, I, I constantly state, you know, how the importance of being an investor because we need those returns. And with P2P or what you guys are doing, you're really giving people the option to, to loan, to make money, right? Above, above average interest. That's yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, the, the exciting thing about peer to peer lending and about, um, you know, one of BlockFi's products that, that enables you to earn interest on your crypto holdings is that it's a channel to make more money that didn't necessarily exist before. Um, the, the things that people got excited about from the peer-to-peer -peer lending sector were the opportunities for portfolio diversification and income generation uh, and, and the ability to access those um, even with, you know, a $1,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 investment and that simply just didn't exist uh, before that industry came around. Yeah. Now, BlockFi kind of has two different products in a sense, right? Where either one, I could borrow money against my crypto holdings, or two, I could just park them and receive like above average, above market interest or something like that. Is that right? <clears throat> that's, that's exactly right. Um, so if you have Bitcoin or Ether, you can open up a BlockFi account and earn interest uh, the same way that you earn interest uh, in a savings account from a bank, um, except without uh, like FDIC insurance and some of those like uh, banking protections that exist from the federal government. Right. Um, but you earn interest in the asset that you've deposited. The interest is paid every month. And once the interest is paid to you, it becomes part of your balance. And therefore, you're earning compound interest uh, on the balances that you hold with BlockFi. At the same time, you have the ability to borrow U.S. dollars against the value of that cryptocurrency that you have with BlockFi at rates as low as 4.5% per year. Um, and when we do that, uh, those loans are structured as interest-only loans. Uh, so if you, you know, borrow $10,000 at 4.5% at a year, your monthly payment would be you know, $450 divided by 12 uh, and then you can pay back the principal either at the end of that term or at a later date. And the reason I mentioned that structure is because for certain types of uh, investing, specifically cash flow type investing and some of the velocity of money arbitrage that you talk about in one of your other videos where you're borrowing it for and investing in something that earns 10, that interest only repayment structure can be really valuable in terms of getting incremental leverage from the cash flow that you're producing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those of you on the podcast that maybe haven't watched the videos, we're talking about the concept of velocity of money where $1 can do multiple jobs. So I can put it into one account um, and pull it back out while it's still parked there earning interest and then put it to another job. Uh, so for example, I could take my crypto, I could take my Bitcoin um, that has gone up 150% this year um, and I could 
<laughs> borrow against it, I'm paying 4% annually or 4.5% annually, but hopefully making 100% annually. And then I can redeploy that money into now another asset. So for example, a piece of real estate, like, like Zach, you mentioned in Texas, I could put into a piece of real estate. Now that hopefully I'm making seven, eight, 10% on that. So now that $1 is doing multiple jobs. So catching you guys up on the velocity of money. Now, um, I love that concept. Uh, I always say Warren Buffett said, uh, right? If, if we don't learn how to make money when we sleep, we'll work till the day that we die. So it's all about putting that money to work. And hodling is makes perfect sense because of the app because crypto is all about uh, investing into a technology that needs to be developed it's going to take years so we want to hodl but being able to unlock that value um, is important